so far you have understood how to analyze data using t test and you have also understood that t test is to be used only when a variable has got two levels or two categories if there is a variable where the categories or the levels are more than two say three four etc some of the people they still use t test when they have three levels and what they do is they make pairs if you have three levels then there will be three pairs and then they use t test in reality this should not be done in case one has three levels then one should use what is known as analysis of variance if you are interested in comparing the mean scores of the dependent variable or any criterion variable of these three groups. So, let us now understand the analysis of variance. Now, in analysis of variance, I am going to take you through the different names of analysis of variance the assumptions underlying analysis of variance and when to use analysis of variance, how to write objectives for analysis of variance, how to formulate hypothesis for analysis of variance and how to use SPSS for analyzing the data and lastly from the output of the SPSS how to really interpret the results. The I will be taking you two examples, one where the f value will be significant and another where f value is not significant. So, you should be able to later on interpret the result of your own research. Analysis of variance can be of different types. If suppose the researcher has one variable where three levels are there, for example, types of schools, there may be government schools, aided schools and private schools. Suppose the intelligence you may have the three levels of intelligence, high intelligence, average intelligence and low intelligence. Now, if you want to compare the self efficacy or anxiety or reasoning of students or teachers working in the three schools or more than three schools and you are interested in comparing the mean scores on the self efficacy or intelligence or anxiety of the people working in the three colleges or schools or belonging to the three levels of the variable. Since there is only one variable having three level, so this will be called one way analysis of variance. Now, there might be instances when the researcher has two variables each having minimum two levels. Now, in this case one can use analysis of variance, but the analysis of variance will be called two way analysis of variance because there are two groups and each group is having two levels or more than two levels or there are two variables each having two or more than two levels. So, this is in general can also be called as n and n into m factorial design. The lastly I will take you to another analysis of variance category and if a researcher has three variables 
each variable is having two levels or more than two levels or some variables may have two levels, some may have three levels etcetera. Then the data cannot be analyzed with the help of neither one way analysis of variance nor two way analysis of variance. Here a researcher has to use three way analysis of variance. If variable A has n levels, variable B has m levels and variable C has l levels, then you can say it is n by m by l factorial design analysis of variance. Now, let us understand the assumptions which should be satisfied by the data. If the data are to be analyzed with the help of any analysis of variance, whether one way, two way, three way analysis of variance. The assumptions are number one, the normal distribution. That means, the dependent variable or any criterion variable should have a normal distribution in the population. The second assumptions to be satisfied is homogeneity of variance. That means, the differences within the levels of one group and the levels of another group and the levels of another group, these differences should be of the same magnitude and that means, the homogeneity of variance. The third assumptions to be satisfied is the data must be either on the interval scale or ratio scale. The last assumption of analysis of variance is there should not be any outliers. In case there are outliers, then that data should be taken out from the analysis. Now, in order to use analysis of variance, one must know whether one is using one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA or three way ANOVA. Right at the moment, I will concentrate only on one way ANOVA. In one way analysis of variance, there must be one variable having more than two levels. For example, the types of school. So, there must be three types of school. If you have the levels of intelligence, then there must be three levels of intelligence. If you have only two levels of intelligence or you have only two types of the school, then there is no sense of using one way analysis of variance. If the data of the study where there are two levels, you can analyze it with the help of t-test as I said earlier. Even if you want to use one way ANOVA, you can do that, but the results will be the same. You must have understood or you must have learnt that there is a relationship between t and f value. The t is equal to the square root of f or t square is equal to f. So, therefore, we will now take one example where we will have one variable with three levels. Let us take one objective whose data can be analyzed with the help of one way ANOVA. The objective wording should be like this to compare mean scores of self efficacy of teachers teaching in primary, secondary and higher secondary schools. For this objective, one may formulate the hypothesis in the null form and the hypothesis can be stated like this. There is no significant difference in mean scores of self efficacy of teachers working in primary schools, 
secondary schools and higher secondary schools. For testing this hypothesis, one may use one way ANOVA to test it and for the analysis one may use SPSS. So, in the SPSS there is one way analysis of variance which can be used. So, I will show you how it can be done and the output little later. From the output of SPSS we can make the table as shown and the title of this particular table should be summary of one way ANOVA of self efficacy. From the table it can be seen that the F value is 11.34 which is significant at 0.01 level with D F equal to 2 oblique 2 double 9. It means that the mean scores of self efficacy of teachers teaching in primary, secondary and higher secondary schools differ significantly. Therefore, the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference in mean scores of self efficacy of teachers teaching in primary, secondary and higher secondary schools is rejected. In order to know which schools teachers self efficacy differs significantly from the others, the data were further analyzed with the help of t test. Here I like to mention that if you want you can use Duncan's multiple range test also in order to find out which groups mean score of self efficacy is significantly different from the others. Now, in this particular case I will concentrate only on the t values from the SPSS output you can make the t table as shown. From the table you can see that there are t values. So, you have to do the interpretation of each t value separately. Therefore, there will be three paragraphs of this particular table. From table you can see that the t value for primary school and secondary school is 4.22 which is significant at 0.01 level. From the table you can see that the t value for primary school and secondary school teachers is 4.22 which is significant at 0.01 level with d f equal to 198 score of self efficacy of primary school teachers is 73.29 which is significantly higher than those of secondary school teachers whose mean score of self efficacy is 59.29. It may therefore be said that the self efficacy of teachers teaching in the primary schools is significantly higher than those of secondary schools. The t value of self efficacy of teachers teaching in primary schools and higher secondary schools is 0.05. It indicates that the mean scores of self efficacy of teachers teaching in primary schools and higher secondary schools do not differ significantly. It may therefore be said that the teachers teaching in primary schools 
as well as higher secondary schools were found to have self efficacy to the same extent. Lastly, the T value for the self efficacy of teachers teaching in secondary schools and higher secondary schools is 4.38, which is significant at 0 0.01 level with DF equal to 198. It indicates that the mean scores of self-efficacy of teachers teaching in secondary schools and higher secondary schools differ significantly. The mean self-efficacy score of teachers teaching in secondary schools is 59.29, which is significantly higher than those teaching in higher secondary schools, which is 73.46. It may therefore be said that teachers teaching in higher secondary schools had significantly higher self-efficacy in comparison to secondary schools. On the whole, it can be said that teachers teaching in the secondary schools were found to have significantly lower self-efficacy in comparison to those teaching in primary schools and higher secondary schools. Whereas, the teachers teaching in primary schools and higher secondary schools were found to have self-efficacy to the same extent. Let us take another example where the data can be analyzed with the help of one-way analysis of variance. And the researcher suppose writes the objective like this to study the influence of religious affairs on academic achievement of students. For this objective, the researcher may state the hypothesis in the null form as there is no significant influence of religious affairs on academic achievement of students to test this hypothesis, the researcher will be using one way analysis of variance. The analysis can be done using SPSS. The output of the SPSS will be shown later on. You can make a table as shown. The interpretation will be as follows. From the table, it can be seen that the F value is 1.45, which is not significant. It indicates that the mean scores of academic achievement of students belonging to the different levels of religious affairs do not differ significantly. Thus, there is no significant influence of religious affairs on academic achievement of students. In this context, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of religious affairs on academic achievement of students is not rejected. It may therefore be said that students belonging to the different religious affairs, their academic achievement did not differ significantly. Therefore, there is no significant difference in their academic activities.